Why, hello everyone, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Story Mode. I've got my tea, I've got my crew, and I am ready to complete the Alexander Raid series. Let's go! And thank goodness for that tea, seriously. There's so much reading. Okay, let's uh, just go ahead and get things moving. There's people waiting. Uh, Mide warily eyes a thicket a short distance away. Ah, adventurer. You come at an opportune moment. It would seem we have a visitor. I was pacing about thinking of round rocks when something in the shadows drew my eye. I caught only a brief glimpse, but it bore an uncanny resemblance to Quick Thinks' constant companion. Shanoa, was it? If the curl's here, there's a good chance her Illuminati keepers are close by. We'd best track her down and quickly. Follow me. You got it. Lead the way! Here we are. Hey! Kitty! Good find. Just as I thought, it is Shinoa. Or is it? One curl kitten looks much the same as another, and she doesn't seem to have brought any of her friends. Over there! Uplandis! What are all these snap crashings and- An Illuminati spy, sent by Quick Thinks to observe our movements, like as not. Given the sizable disadvantage at which we find ourselves, we thought it best to relieve him of duty. He spent his final moments babbling about all the Illuminati's deranged schemes. Claimed that once the final core was activated and Alexander fully operational, the fortress would gain the power to travel through time taking them along with it. He seemed quite convinced that Quickthink was, uh, was a prophet of sorts, a traveler from the future come to the present to return history to its proper state. Aye, and that's not the half of it. According to him, the battle for history has already been won, and not by us. For the future is writ in the Enigma Codex, and we but play our roles in it. Quickthink's a traveler from the future? That would certainly explain how he was able to anticipate our every move, but could it be that he has already conquered the worlds of tomorrow? Have all of our efforts been in vain? Bah. Tongue flaps of crazed Illuminati make brain case hurt. Backrix would speak of different subject. What brings Uplanders back to shortstop? Having settled upon a plan of action, Sid and I were in the process of making our final preparations with Master Matoya when this kitten scampered in, mewing as if to beckon us. We duly followed her, and she led us here, much to the dismay of the fellow at our feet. I'm not one to look a gift curl in the mouth, but something about all this doesn't sit right with me. She's been at Quick Thinks' side, make that on his bloody head every step of the way, and now she decides to betray her keepers? If that cat could speak her tongue... Uh, or if the cat could speak our tongue, I would have a question or two for her. Mayhap even three. Ugh. I can't believe I'm even considering this, but then it wouldn't be the strangest thing I've heard today. You there. Cat. You're Shinoa. Quick thinks is a little familiar, aren't you? Two mews for yay and one for nay. Mew. Mew. Did she truly... Do you want to go home? Seven hells. I think the bloody furball might actually understand us. But that doesn't mean we can trust her. For all we know, she could be here to do her master's dirty work. A moment, Uplanders. Tongue flaps of Round Rocks come to Backrix's brain case. Three years ago, when Round Rocks found Codex Splinterstone, Round Rocks says Black Curl Child is there, onlooking. Backrix thinks nothing of this then, but now... You mean to imply that Shinoa here was present when we attempted the summoning? I very much doubt that. If she were a kitten three years ago, she'd be a fully grown curl by now. Unless, that is, she took a shortcut through time. An implausible theory, I grant you, but one we cannot well dismiss in light of recent events. If true, it would raise a still more troubling possibility that Round Rocks' discovery of the Codex was no mere coincidence, but an event orchestrated by Quick Thinks to further his own ends.
Oh, this just gets better and better. Look, whatever's going on here, we're not like to find out by standing around talking. We need to delve deeper into that fortress. And as luck would have it, Wedge claims his latest invention will allow us to do just that. I've sent him and Biggs on ahead to the Maker's Quarter to perform their final tests. Meet them there when you're ready. I'll join you as soon as my own preparations are complete. You got it. I am on the way. To travel back in time and set past wrongs aright, who could resist such temptation, and how grievous the consequences of surrendering to it? For in allowing the past to consume us, and making our every choice, our every action, the correct one, would we not cease to live in the present, and in turn lose sight of the future? Tis a path not to redemption, but to madness. Was that for me, or... Oh, bye. Good seeing you. I'm going to go to that place, they said. Ah, got some friends here. <laughs> Waiting ever so patiently. Hello. <laughs> okay. Ah, Derman, all fired up and ready to go, are we? Then I'd best hurry up and brief you on the task at hand. In a nutshell, we'll be attacking the Primal on two fronts. As we speak, Ishtol is leading an attempt to cut off the Primal's source of ether. Our job, meanwhile, will be to head into the belly of the beast and rescue young Round Rocks. Without her to view the Enigma Codex Forum, the Illuminati won't be able to turn back, uh, turn back time anymore, giving us a fighting chance of beating the bastards. The Chief reckons that the shortest path is through the giant's great fat noggin, only problem being that it's inside the barrier. Not to worry, though, Wedge's latest wonder will take care of that. He's dubbed it the BBG-2, which he tells me is short for Barrier Begone. Of course, the barrier doesn't just serve to keep folk out, it also keeps the primal in. That being why Mida and her mates raised the bleeding thing in the first place. So the moment it goes down, there'll be nothing to stop the Colossus from running rampant, if it has a mind to. Which means we're gonna need to move fast. The Chief will take the Excelsior in as close as he can to Alexander's head, where you'll jump off and secure us away inside. Wasting no time, you'll then climb back aboard, and Wedge will re-engage the barrier. All before our metal friend even knows what's happening. Got it? Good, because we got our work cut out for us. Let's get going. It is a plan, and finally we're ready! Thank you for waiting, all of you good people. Let me make sure they're ready. All right, and we are prepared to face the final four challenges of Alexander. We've got with us a fresh group. Falka here will be one of our healers, a white mage. Uh, Mirgenstirm will be a dark knight, one of our tanks. Dea will be a dancer. Yasasa, our other tank, a warrior. Uh, Kalenia or Selenia, darn it, you said it, and then I forgot it, sorry. Um, I'm gonna guess Kalenia, yes is also a healer, a sage, and Adamant is a monk, and Astra is a dancer as well. Two dancers, that'll be fun. And these... <laughs> and Navi's just here for support, I guess. With good cosplay. Anyway, okay. These folks have waited long enough, let's get in there. Since the Charlian Exodus, a structure has stood steady against the flow of the Thal... That's the wrong thing. Raised from the waters by the thrice-mad Illuminati, the steel colossus Alexander yet towers over the Thaliac, bleeding the hinterlands dry with a thirst for ether that will not be slaked. The time has come for action. As Yastola and Master Matoya seek to magically sever the primers, uh, primal's death grip on the land, you will take to the skies with Sid in hopes of securing an ingress through the colossus's mighty pate. The realm itself cries out for succor. Will you rise to answer its call? You bet we will! And in we go! All right, time to deactivate the barrier. Oh boy, the smoke's too thick. Can't see a damn thing. You'll have to press on alone. We are ready. And we are here. Oh, I forgot we started outside. Neat. Pigs, Wedge, bring the Excelsior around. You're on your own from here, Derman. Good luck and Godspeed. Why, thank you, Sid. All right. Let's go, team. Let's do this darn thing. Some very good cosplay happening in here.
Let's fight our way in. Which I forgot happens. I like it. Whoosh. Unsafe, but fun. And here we are. To fight a little mini boss. Faust Z. Ow. So the actual boss of this fight, which will be coming a bit later, is a complicated one, but really interesting all the same. And fortunately, the complicated stuff is going to be in the hands of more capable, experienced people. I will try to explain it <laughs> once we're in there. Best I can. What a cool set piece of a thing, though, huh? Fighting on the actual outside of the darn thing. In we go! Now that is a thing. Time for a trash fight. All right, so this is sort of a recycling melting room of sorts, and the refurbisher zero in the center here is uh, uh, is our main opponent. But there are going to be mechanics with all this floor lava, as you might imagine. So, every now and then the boss is going to use a move called Stockpile. When the boss does that, the boss is going to pull in all of the scrap metal on the platform, like so, and use it to further reassemble themselves, creating for themselves an arm, which is going to enable them to do a lot more dangerous moves. Now, more scrap has been dropped. So, the off-tank is going to be taking these power generators to power back on those enemies. They are going to bring those enemies into this space here, which is about to become lava. We are going to kill these things over in this space over here, I thought. Over here. There we go. Oh, boy. I don't know if that one's in or not. Whatever. We'll manage. We're fine. We need to kill the enemies and then get out of here. Because it's going to be lava. And lava hurts. Don't know if that one dropped close enough. That one might get drawn in, but it's okay. It's not instantly bad. Okay, yeah, that one's getting drawn in. That's fine. Just can't happen too many times. Nope. Now, some junk is going to get dropped on the ground, and we're going to use that to hide from this move. There we are. Nope. More scrap. And keep on working on the boss here. While they power on all the old bots and get them moved over where the lava is going to be so we can kill them in the right spot. There we go. Hide. Keep shooting the robots though, because we do need to kill them. So we can trap him there. Yes, good. Okay, out of the lava. That time I think we did very good. If the boss manages to draw in enough bots to uh, reassemble their other arm, they will get access to a lot more moves and be very dangerous. Look out. That's a big one. <laughs> As danger puddles go. Gracious. My damage output has been so bad. <laughs> Superior metals materials detected. Switch to high priority mode. Here's the other big mechanic of the fight. A Faust has dropped in here. And we need to fight and defeat this Faust. Now, the Faust cannot, while it is still alive, 
remain... Like, if the Faust touches lava while it's still alive, that's an instant wipe for all of us. And that's no good. So we do want to burn the Faust down very fast. All right. Burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. But still hide, though. Still hide. Burn and hide. Yes, okay. Now we want to hopefully... Uh, did we kill in the right spot? I don't know if we did. Uh, ah, it lives. Tough break. That's okay. I don't think we're dead. This might still work. Maybe, 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 maybe. Even if the boss does manage to draw that thing in, I think we'll still be fine. Uh, hey, I got melted. Yay. I was a little worried for us for a minute there. Now we just got to finish this darn thing. You can see what I mean by the weird mechanics, right? There's lots to juggle and lots to coordinate. Got to make sure to revive all the enemies, but only kill them in the right spot. Then get out of the way. <laughs> all while dealing with all the other nonsense. And if it's managed to reassemble an arm by this point, then it is putting out a lot of very spicy damage that is even more to juggle. We're doing very well, though. Or rather, my team is doing very well. And I'm helping, kind of. Contributing just a little bit of damage here and there. Kind of for fun. Ooh, better stack up. And what the heck. In case it actually works. Big move! You die! And that's one down! Three fights remain. Good job, team. Good job and good looking. And some good cosplay, if I do say so myself. All right, moving on to the next one. Fine work, old friend. Thanks to you, we have our way in. Stay where you are, we're coming. But first, now that you're clear, we had best get that barrier back up before the big fellow gets restless. Wedge, ready the BBG-2 and reactivate the barrier on my mark. Mark! Excellent timing, Yastola. Dermon's done it. We have a clear path into the heart of the beast. Good. Tis a relief to hear that at least one side of the operation proceeded according to plan. The same may not be said of the other. Our efforts to cut off the primal source of ether proved wholly ineffective. Quite why, I cannot say, though I'm hopeful that one among us can. What, Mide? On the basis that she summoned the damn thing, you mean? I think you'd better explain. Like all primals, Alexander constantly draws ether from its surroundings, both to sustain itself and to gain in strength. Master Matoya and I believed we could disrupt, or at the very least inhibit, this process by means of Arcanima. By creating a vast impassable etheric membrane between the primal and the land from which it drinks, I which is why the old witch had me place those infernal devices of hers in every nook and cranny of this place. Are you telling me they don't work? Yes and no. As far as we can tell, the Arcanima are functioning precisely as intended, and yet, for reasons we've been unable to ascertain, they have no measurable effect on the Primal. 
All right, out with it, Mide. If there's anything you haven't told us, we need to hear it now. We're running out of options. I fear it will not avail us, but very well. It all began with a curious encounter in my younger days. I was out playing on my own one day when a stranger appeared before me. He told me anything my heart wished for could be mine if I but heeded his words. In my youth, I didn't fully comprehend what the man was proposing at the time. Nevertheless, his words seemed to burn themselves into my very soul. Reunite the scattered shards of the Enigma Codex, he said, and perform the sacred rite before the ruins that yet stand strong against the river's flow. Then, and only then, shall your hopes and dreams become reality. With that, he handed me a relic, a horn with a tip of metal, which seemed so foreign as to hail from another world. It would serve as a catalyst for the summoning, he explained, a gift from your friend, Travanche. And then he was gone. Travanche? I know the man. Our paths crossed during my time in Limsa, in the days before the Calamity. I might have guessed that the Asians had a hand in this. The horn of which you speak was once rumored to reside on Seal Rock. It's a lost relic of the ancients, with the power to manipulate the etheric energy in the very air around us. The Scions have long pursued the horn, fearing the devastation that might ensue were an artifact of such power to fall into the wrong hands. This is tying back into 1.0 story, actually. Like that whole horn and the quest to gather it and that Travanchet character, all from 1.0. A very minor thing that only really applies here, but still, kind of cool. Finally, I do begin to see. If I have the right of it, Alexander's Third Corps is using the horn to draw ether from far and wide. Tis little wonder our plan failed. Even without moving an ilm, the Primal possesses the means to drain not just this land of ether, but our very star. Then our course is clear. If the Old Witch's magics won't avail us, we shall just have to go inside and dismantle the core the old-fashioned way. Indeed. And we yet must be wary. We have seen the course of time reversed once before. We may well see it again. Even should we succeed in destroying our target, there is naught to prevent the Illuminati from simply returning the stricken core to its previous state. Aye, they are free to turn back the clock again and again, the Primal growing stronger all the while. So what do we do then? We can't just give up. No, we press on. Lest we forget, controlling Alexander requires the Codex, and the Codex is but a useless piece of stone without the mind of the gobby girl. If we can rescue Round Rocks, Quick thinks we'll have no way to flip the hourglass. The Circle of Knowing once tasked me with recovering the horn, and twas through mine own negligence that Travanche acquired it. I'm kind of bouncing back and forth on pronunciation. Didn't plan for this. That it now endangers our world is my responsibility. Even were I not a scion, I should do all in my power to make amends. Whatever assistance I can offer, it's yours. Then it begins. I'll send word to our friends in Idleshear. Biggs, Wedge, ready the Excelsior. Derman, prepare for departure. Let Operation Rescue Round Rocks commence. Same. <laughs> okay. Seven hells. It wasn't enough that those Illuminati lunatics had a bleeding time machine, was it? No, it had to be a time machine with the power to destroy the whole bleeding world. I mean, I'm used to the future of Eorzea being at stake, but this is the future past and present all rolled into one. We have to get Round Rocks out of there before those gobbies can put any more of their crazy schemes in motion. I agree. Speaking of gobbies, have you talked to old Backricks lately? Turns out the kitten you met wasn't Shinoa after all, just a doppelganger. 
He's already taken the little furball back to the shortstop and given it a name. Schrodinger, or however you pronounce it. Anyway, I'd best be heading back that way myself. See you there, Darman. Good joke. <laughs> How's it going, Schrodinger? Meow? Yes, indeed. Okay. Undaunted by recent revelations, Biggs would brief you on the next stage of the rescue mission. Ready to head back into the belly of the beast, Derman? All right, let's get this rescue mission off the ground. First, some good news. While the barrier was down, we were able to get our first good look inside Alexander's innards. Far as we can tell, Round Rocks is being held captive in what seems to be the central control chamber of the whole Colossus, called, helpfully, Central Control. As to how we reach it, do you remember when you infiltrated Midas that there was that cavernous room with a dirty great city in it? All right, well, we've spotted one of those floating platforms which goes back and forth between there and the place we need to get to. The quickest route to the city is straight through the giant's head. You'll go in through the hatch you opened for us last time, and so take care of any guards and secure the platform I mentioned. Meanwhile, the chief and the others will be making their way to you via Midas after setting out in advance to sweep the place for any nasty surprises. Once you've all rendezvoused, it'll be time to storm the control room while me and Wedge stage a little diversion. You got all that? No. Good, now let's crack some Illuminati skulls. I'm on board. <laughs> I've been talking a lot in a very warm room. We'll make it. Let's get in there, though. Here we are. The breath of the creator. History itself stands in the balance as the Steel Colossus is revealed to have the inconceivable power to transport its occupants through time and space, a power which the Illuminati are all too eager to use to write and or rewrite the past and remake the future in their own twisted image. With time quite literally of the essence, you must find passage to the very heart of the Colossus, where the unfortunate Round Rocks, the key to Quick Thinks's dark plot, is being held captive. Once more unto the breach, warrior of light. Indeed so. We're off. Big pretty city. And here we go again. Uh, I know I've already said it, but I will continue saying it. Thank you so much to all of the Dantalus folk, or geese, if you will, who have been so willing to help out with all this stuff. Making time for it, coordinating in advance so that as many people as possible can get in on it, being prepared enough so they know the mechanics <laughs> enough to compensate for me. Well, I, I've done my best, but I'm rusty. <laughs> it really means a lot. And it has made, like, it is enabling us to see these raids at all and allowing us to show them off in a more optimal way where you can actually see more of it. Because even among all the people watching this who do play the game, and I know there's a lot, not everybody does the raids. because it can be a little intimidating. And I'm very happy that the Dantalus folk have helped to provide them the secondhand experience. It's very cool of all of you. All right, into the exhaust vent. Yipes. All right, well, this boss is a handful, a multi-phase handful. It's gonna be good though. I'll explain as best I can. Pretty complicated little arena we got here. Obviously don't touch the sides. Also don't step on any of these buttons. These buttons trigger traps. Now the boss is going to step on the buttons to trigger traps, and we'll just have to avoid them. But those traps will also fire if we stand on them, so we shouldn't. Lame Bricks Strike Box. Good names. Ow. Look out for that. 
All right, I think the buttons are glowing, which makes me think it's about to... Don't be standing in the way of that. That's a move that will hurt more. It'll hurt the target more the closer the target is, but also anybody caught in that column will also be hurt. All right, it's about to jump on a trap. Which one? Okay, that's ice beams. That's about to fire beams of ice down either side, like so. And I'm sure we'll be seeing the others soon. I think it might be time for fa- Yep, time for phase two. A steamroller. We need to kill this thing before it can roll all the way across, or we die. Shouldn't be a problem with this very competent crew. Despite the handicap of having me in the party. <laughs> we are really burning it down, though. It's not, not a problem. It's down. All right. Now for the final phase. Defeat the strike box. Ooh, that move means, okay. When it does that single strike or whatever the move is called, uh, one of two symbols is going to appear above its head. If it's red, it's a move that we should, like, run away from, because it's about to fire off very close to it. If it's green, we need to run in close, because anything not close to the boss will get hurt a lot. Just one more thing to keep track of. Single charge. Green! Get close! Yeah! Oop, oh, it's jumping on the middle one. That's... ow. That's what happens when it jumps on the middle one. <laughs> Illuminati give lame bricks toys. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Woo! Lame bricks likes fun playing with toys. Listen, as a machinist, I now understand all too well. Burn it down. All right, spikes to the side. And then ice. Get to the inside. The last one, which we're not going to see, just spikes the floor, which causes a little damage, but also roots you in place for a little bit. So you'd want to make sure that uh, if there's going to be a follow-up that could hurt you in a certain position, you're in the right spot for that one, because you're going to be rooted and can't move. But we're fine. Two down, two remain. Such good style. Ah, uh, I love it. All right, let's get outside. Excellent work, old friend. That platform's our shortcut to the heart of the machine. All seems quiet on our front, so seven hells. We got company. Ah, there you are, Derman. We were met by a small welcoming party, but it was nothing we couldn't handle. Biggs and Wedge just contacted me as well. They're headed here as we speak. Round rocks. So, this is the Enigma Codex. Yipes. And that must be the third and final core. Twelve have mercy. If you could but see the volume of ether issuing from it. 
Yes, much swirly bright. Time winks can spread, travel to overtimes, make bad things good again. Could it be? Do we truly have the power to change the past? I could erase my mistakes. I could see him again. Three, three years ago, Mide lost Dear One. Mide wants Dear One back, yes? Round Rocks, Round Rocks helps Mide. Round Rocks, no, you must save your strength. Mide worries too much. Round Rocks is strong, Gobby. Uplanders hold on to brain cases. Time wings spread. Seven hells, is the girl going mad? Stop this, round rocks. Stop, I say. Uh, Biggs? Where are we? And why is everything spinning? Biggs, Wedge, can you hear me? Round Rocks has engaged Alexander's time distortion mechanism. We're hurtling into the past! We're what? But pigs, over here. You're not going to believe this. Huh? What's me doing down there with those? Hold on. They're performing the summoning ritual. Fuck me, we really are in the past. What in the seven hells? Someone's taking control of the Colossus. Hold tight, I think it's about to go berserk. Damn it all. This isn't right. We must abort the summoning. Quickly, Mide, the seal! Diane, no! Huh. 
What is Medley making Kitten doing? would seem we're back in our own time. <gasps> Past is made right, and we return to now times. Treasure Hunter's friends die, as it is writ as it must be. Uplanders serve quick thinks well today. <gasps> Uplanders are not grasping meaning. Quick thinks breaks into bitty pieces, fit in Uplander's tiny brain cases. Time is flat, round shape. What a good sentence. All things Uplanders and Gobbies did, are doing, and will do. Doings happen over and over, and over again, for all times. So when Mide and her friends attempted to summon Alexander three years ago, what they actually saw was us traveling back in time? But that's... that's madness. Time is an endless circle. My failure, my pain, my suffering, it was all doomed to unfold like this from the very beginning. Let us away, quickly. Mide! Mide must hurry! No. Nothing remains for me out there. My future, my past, my reason for being, it all ended before it ever began. Mide! Mide! Still up here. Whew. Boy. How are we doing, team? Chief, you stole a... and round rocks. Gods, never been so bloody glad to see you. I thought we'd never make it back in what? Wait, where's Mide? Mide stays behind in Giant of Whirly Cogs. All because of round rocks. Round Rocks must go back to Giant of Whirlycocks. Save me day. You leave that to us, child. Wedge, get Jessie on that link pearl and tell her to bring the Excelsior around. Though I don't much care for the answer, we finally know the truth behind the events of that day three years past. The Illuminati masterminded the massacre, and through some ungodly trick of time, it was us that brought them there to do the deed. And what about Mide? The only thing keeping her going was the hope that her bow's soul lived on in the machine. But seeing what happened to the poor bastard... Aye. 
We witnessed the truth with our own eyes, sucked into the core of the Colossus to sate the Primal's appetite. If all remains of him, it's no more than heat and light. Oof. My poor voice. <laughs> and my poor patient compatriots. So nice of them. Biggs has instructions for you from Sid. Quick thing says the future's already been rid, huh? That we're fighting a losing battle? Well, we got a thing or two to say about that, don't we, Derman? Round Rocks is safe with us, which means the Illuminati won't be turning back time on us anymore. And that's not all. Thanks to your efforts, we got ourselves a straight pass to the third and final core. Aye, the very heart of the Colossus. Put it out of action and the whole thing will grind to a halt. Let's go, Derman. We'll show the Illuminati that the future's yet to be decided, and save Mide while we're at it. I love your optimism. You're good at psyching us up. Good leadership, in my opinion. Who do I... Oh, we're ready. Very good. And very cool. So cool looking. Okay, uh... Next one. Second to last. Heeding round Rox's innocent words, Alexander spreads forth its wings of time, swooping you and your bewildered companions three years into the past. There you witness with your own eyes, and in a shocking turn of events, help to bring about by your own hand the tragedy that befell Mide and her companions that fateful day. Is time truly not but a circle, the past, present, and future long since preordained, as the Mad Goblin Prophet would have you believe? In the face of daunting odds, you press onward, that you might yet seize control of your own destiny. And onward we shall go. This fight has some very fun gimmicks as well. Well, one very fun gimmick. And then just lots of other stuff that'll try to kill you, but that's the same. <laughs> Hello again, very good squad who is ready to fight. And here we go. Oh, this is also fun. All right. Lots of mechanics to uh, deal with in general. But the one really important thing is when there's a point in the fight where we see several open ducts appear in the space, we need to interact with those immediately. Otherwise you die. Designation, Blasty. Intruders to central calculation system detected. Initiating extermination protocol. Well, don't do that. Yeah. Jeez. That's a lot of nonsense. All right, we got an ad. Got to take that out. I'm honestly amazed I have not died yet. It will still probably happen, but... Still, I counted a victory, it's not happened this far. Yipes. Run to the outside.
Now uh, there's gonna be a move. Oh, might have already happened. <laughs> I think I was too distracted trying to do other things. When those big pods drop, there's a move that follows up called Propeller Wind, and you want to hide behind the pods. Activating transformation module. Transition to rapid fire mode. Hit the thing! It's our first active time maneuver, everyone. Initiating second mode, generating strike zone. And there we are. You have to jump on the ship because the platform gets destroyed. But then you have to also jump off of it, like press any button to jump off of it before you run out of time, or else you will die. <laughs> That's a pretty simple version of that sort of active time mechanic. Yipes. But there will be more of them as we continue through the raid stuffs. So far, so good. Fun tunes, too. Oh, there's a shield now. We can only break the shield from the front. It's the only place it works. So you have to break the shield and then get the heck out of the way before the follow-up. Blasty charge. Oh. <laughs> I died because I where the front was moved because the tank did a good job moving it away from everybody else I just was not aware of the plan I should have guessed though it makes a lot of sense in retrospect yipes it's a lot of stuff to dodge we almost got this darn thing yeah Get it! Yeah, we win! Good job, everyone! Only one remains! Good job to a lot of you. Okay, right, at least I wasn't the only one to die. <laughs> uh, sympathy. All right. Forward. And back. And forward. You get it. Outstanding, Dermon. Another Illuminati creation reduced to scrap metal. I'll wager the mere sight of you is enough to send the gobby scurrying back to the drawing board. There it is, the heart of the beast. Only now that I see it up close do I comprehend the true scale of the thing. To have reached this size in so short a space of time, the core must be taking in ether at a positively ungodly rate. I'd be willing to wager that it can regrow itself faster than we could ever hope to chip away at it. Which means we'll need to change tack. Hmm. The central control room houses everything required to operate the Colossus. It's not inconceivable that it might offer us a way to regulate, or even shut off the flow of ether to the core. Of course, any attempt to control Alexander is doomed to fail without the guidance of the Enigma Codex, and there's only one person alive who can access its secrets. But Chief, do we really need to drag the poor girl back here? What if she falls into Illuminati hands again? Uplanders waste their tongue flaps. Quick thinks has seen future, true future, and it ends badly for Uplanders. Very, very badly. Uplanders think they just lazy walk into central control? Quick thinks thinks not. All passages are sealed, all floaty boards disabled. Only way left open is there, through core chamber. 
And when Uplanders come next, it will be Uplanders' end times. Quick Thinks has seen it. <laughs> Menacing and cute. Simultaneously. <laughs> Bad Shinoa. Couldn't read too fast. Oi, Wedge, is it just me, or are you getting the feeling we've seen all this happen before? It is, it is Watcher Book of Bakrix. And look, writings end where Bakrix leaves off, when Shinoa sends Watcher Book Spinny falling from Bakrix's fingers. What the? You mean to say the book Quick Thinks has been reading from all this time is your journal? The same journal that slipped from your hands when we traveled back in time. So that's how he was able to anticipate our every move. He's no prophet, just a gobby with delusions of grandeur and a diary from the future. So the glorious, bleeding future he was always going on about, the one that was writ, was nothing but Bakrix's record of the stuff we'd already seen? Bugger me. I've just had a thought. Oi, Cat, are you Schrodinger from the shortstop? Or are you Quick Thinks' is familiar, Shinoa? Uh, twice for yay, was it, Chief? I bleed and knew it. She's both. After Schrodinger went tumbling down from the Colossus, and don't ask me how she survived the drop, Quick Thinks found her, took her in, and gave her a new name. It's like the two cats, but also one at the same time. Um, setting aside for the moment the question of whether or not that even makes sense, what possessed that confounded cat, whatever you want to call her, to do all this in the first place? I swear all she's done is made a right and old mess of everything. Now, now, Wedge. Taking out your frustrations on a mewling kitten won't get us any closer to dismantling the core. Getting back to the crux of the matter. Bakrix, you said the journal ends right where you left off, yes? That it's nothing but blank pages from that point on? Do you hear that, everyone? The quick thinks would have us believe otherwise, the future, the future from here onward, that is, is still to be written. And I'll be damned if we won't be the ones to write it. Cat, are you not gonna... Okay. Cat <laughs> does as cat pleases. Future book is gone, but no matter. All knowings of true times are safe up here in Quick Thinks' brain case. Quick Thinks' is chosen one, mender of history. Truth is unchanging. <sighs> true times choose Quick Thinks to do their bidding. True times send Shanoa into past, deliver to Quick Thinks knowings of future. True times live inside, guiding all of Quick Thinks' doings. Every tongue flap, every busy deal, every brain spark of Quick Thinks brings world closer and closer to perfection. Guides Illuminati to rightful place as rulers of new world order. True times will not be unmade by ignorant uplanders. <sighs> Quick Thinks needs no future book, no gobby girl. Quick Thinks needs nothing and no one but own self. Future has chosen, and future chooses Quick Thinks. Yes. Even now, power granted by true times wells from Quick Thinks' as fingertips, power beyond understanding of Uplander's feeble brain cases. Alexander, overwatcher of true times, delivered divine judgment on ignorant Uplanders and crushed them out of existence for all times.
intensely fascist and megalomaniacal, but also cute. Conflicted feelings. Hey, Biggs. Let me see if I got this right. Three years ago, the quick thinks of back then found the journal that the back ricks of now dropped, which was only possible because we traveled into the past, what with time being a circle and all that. So he had a look inside and not knowing the truth of the matter, got it into his head that he was some sort of prophet chosen to set history straight, and that Shinoa, who miraculously delivered the book to him, was a messenger from the future sent to show him the way. And that's all well and good, but the question remains, why did that bloody cat start all this in the first place? What could she possibly stand to gain from setting in motion this ridiculously convoluted series of events? Another answer found, another question raised, eh, Derman? You said it. <laughs> Thus spake quick thinks. Darn, they're having fun with text at this point. Judgment Day. Big steals himself for what may well be your final confrontation with the Illuminati. Alright, Derman, this is it. We still don't know exactly how we're going to disable the core, but we do know that our only chance is to get back to that central control room. We also know there's only one way in, and that Quick Things isn't going to let us through without a fight. Now, we can be pretty sure we can't see the future. Not anymore, at least. And without Round Rocks to read the Codex for him, he won't be turning back time on us either. But he's still a power-mad maniac with some of the deadliest machina in the realm at his disposal. And after losing that book of his, I'd wager his trigger finger's feeling pretty bleeding itchy. Alright, we'd best be ready for a battle and a half. Muscle against metal, man against machine. Gods, I don't know whether to laugh, cry, or soil myself. Mayhap all three. Ah, oh, here comes the chief now. It's time to move out. Oh boy, oh boy. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Time moves on. Imperfect past giving way to perfect future. Worthy or unworthy of place in new world order, Alexander will judge. My, my. Yes, all is as Quick Thinks foresees. Truth Hammer of Alexander falls on Uplanders. Ignorant and unworthy are not welcome in Illuminati future. Here, Uplanders meet their end times. What? Freeze time field is deactivated. No matter. Of lenders will be reduced to smolder dust. Fire! Seven hells. Now that was a bit too close for comfort. Was everyone all right? A Colossus inside the Colossus? Look, I don't know what that thing was, but I'm pretty damn sure I know where it went. Or more accurately, when. If I'm not mistaken, what we're looking at is a localized distortion of time. The only question is when our metal friend will reappear. Hmm. Better not to wait, lest it catch us unawares. Dermon, I need you to head into the distortion and dismantle that thing. We'll secure a path to central control while you do. Good luck. Oh, this is it, everyone. The final battle. Let's defeat this darn gobby before it finishes shredding my voice. <laughs> okay. 
Guys, how are we doing? I'm quite certain we just witnessed another manipulation of time, but by whom? With Round Rocks gone and the Enigma Codex rendered useless, it can't very well be the Illuminati. Could Alexander have a will of its own? At any rate, we stand ilms from the core, the very heart of a primal. Whatever the true nature of the entity that awaits you in there, you can be sure it'll be like no foe you faced before. Godspeed, Dermon. Thank you, Sid. Talk about a narrow escape. If I'd been standing so much as a yawn to the left, I'd be a pair of smoking boots by now. Anyway, we'd better get on with it securing the area so the Ustola can bring up the rear with round rocks. We didn't want to drag the poor child back here, but she's the only one who can access the controls. So that swirling void is some sort of ripple in time? Can't say I like the sound of that. You take care in there, Dermon. Oh, I shall. And don't worry, I have backup. Okay, let's get in there. As the crystalline heart of the primal swells ever greater, its thirst for power unquenchable, your only hope lies in calling upon the knowledge of the Enigma Codex to cut off the flow of ether to the Colossus's core. So it is that you and your companions must make a final, brave foray into the belly of the Great Steel Beast. Yet your path will not be an easy one, for the Illuminati mastermind Quick Things has promised that your next journey to the core will be our last. Who will be judged worthy of inheriting the future, and who will be cast aside as a forgotten afterthought to history? Your final confrontation with the Illuminati is at hand. Let's do it! I'm definitely going to botch a mechanic or two in this one, for lack of practice, but it'll be okay. We're going to win. At long last, the final battle. Let's do it, everyone! Oh, I'm excited. What a cool design, too. Alexander Prime. Here goes! I am Alexander, the creator. You, who would prove yourself worthy of our utopia, will be judged. The spectacle, though. Okay, look out for that. That's gonna fire in four different directions, so stand at the diagonals. Or get hurt. But so far, so good. Need to take these away from everyone else. There we are. The time of judgment is nigh. We need to destroy these very fast. All right, we got to kill all this stuff. Burn it down. Very good. Next wave. I'll help kill this one faster. There we are. Very good. And two. Oop. More. Guess we better spread out and take these out as quick as we can, huh? There we go. Woo! Whoa, now. Cool. Yeah. Executing judgment protocol in 10 seconds. Five seconds, four seconds, three, two, one. Hide! Basically, the tank has to use their limit break there. 
or we all die. There is literally no other way to survive that. <laughs> Unless they've changed it, there is literally no other way to survive that. Oop. And now we get to have some fun with temporal stasis. And I might have botched it up. A little bit. Yep. We're okay, though. Well, most of us. That was my fault. Yeah, okay, look out. Temporal stasis basically does a time freeze where it... basically does two danger puddle mechanics back to back and it's going to freeze time in the middle of it so you have to position yourself to be safe for both which is really cool what a cool mechanic idea they start getting so creative with this the further the game gets on Oop. okay green get away from everybody stack marker stack up because the green targets are going to get hit with sort of an AoE thing, so we don't want to have a bunch of those going off near everybody. The stack marker folks have to share damage. And... Oof, close. Tough break. Yep. Take it away! Take it away! My faithful to the past with you, to free these ones from the prison of time. Okay. We need to follow those things. And we need to kill the ad that just ran into this time portal as quick as possible. Ignorant and unworthy are not welcome on the Illuminati future. Uplanders meet their end times. We basically are having to destroy, like, we are the reason we survived this attack here. Is that not cool? What freeze time field is deactivated? No matter. What a cool idea. And now we finish it, or try. Uh, this is a big move, and I don't remember what all it does. Okay, a lot. It does a lot, is the answer. And then there's this also, so let's try to spread out in the safe zone. We're okay. We're going to win! Commencing space-time interference. Oh, fortress that is mine own body, heed my call. Yeah! That again, huh? Whee! Burn it down quick! Those folks being targeted are just now being chased by explosions. It's very dangerous. Oh, and also, goodness, there's so many different things. But I think we did it right. And now I need to move? Because I'm about to get chased by explosions? Ah, don't run into the other person. That's not smart of me. I'm okay! And we're gonna win! Woo! There's the raid! That's Alexander, everybody! Yay. <laughs> Still some story to do, obviously, but... The fight itself is done. Woo! Good job, Squad 3. You did great. That was so fun. Thank you all. Fashionably done, as always. Thank you for joining. <laughs> 
Uh, and thank you for helping me show this off. I hope you all watching have enjoyed it. Again, not done, but still, thank you all so much. And thank you again to Aos for organizing all this. Okay, I'm going to get back out there and we're going to finish this story up. You do not disappoint, old friend. The path to the control room is clear. Everyone follow me. The flow of ether to the core must have stopped. Oh, the flow of... different. The flow of ether to the core must be stopped. Pray lend us your strength one more time, child. Quick thinks winds back time, doings of Uplanders will be undone. History will be rewritten, and Illuminati will rule over new world order. Ha! If you think you can take round rocks from us, you're welcome to try. Pshkah. Foolish Uplanders. Knowings of the Enigma Codex are not known to just one. Cat? Come on! Pick a side! What in the... The damn thing's responding to him! <sighs> Uplanders are slow seeing. Quick thinks never needed Gobby Girl from beginning. When the final core is activated and Alexander fully awakens, its power will be such that it could entirely consume any who sought to control it. You were too craven to risk your own life, until you had no choice. Treasure hunter. A treasure hunter's too slow coming. Future has chosen. You poor deluded fool. You never did work it out, did you? The future doesn't choose us. We choose the future. Now, child! So the knowledge in the Enigma Codex allowed you to disable the core. Power stores are depleting rapidly. Without a steady supply of ether, it's only a matter of time before the whole thing grinds to a halt and fades away. Roundrax is glad to see Treasure Hunter safe. But how is Treasure Hunter sneaky hiding from Illuminati? I... I don't know. There was a great shaking, and I was thrown from my feet into some dark, cramped place. I must have lost consciousness, because I don't remember anything until a few moments ago.
Huh. Sounds to me like you had a nice nap in a rubbish chute. But what matters is that you're safe. And with that, I think we can declare this operation a success. Whew! The marathon is almost concluded. <laughs> Hang in there, me. We're going to make it! The Chief says the advanced calculating device inside the Colossus, Alexander's brain, if you will, is still running on auxiliary power. See that device glowing red over there? There are ones just like it installed all over the place. In that sense, I suppose it's like the entire Colossus is one giant brain. If Alexander put its mind to something, well, I bet it could conceive of things beyond our mortal comprehension. I should probably leave the party, actually. Hang on. Or disband. Whatever. There we go. Poor Mide, huh? The last truly believed that her beloved was alive somewhere inside that steel beast. Can't imagine how she's feeling now. Indeed. I should... There's so much... Stuff to get off my screen. Round Rocks is so happy that Mide is safe. Round Rocks has so many treasures to show Mide back at shortstop. Yeah, we should get out of here. I... I truly remember nothing. It was as if I was floating in a vast, dark emptiness. And yet, I was not afraid, for it was as if a great presence surrounding me in every direction was watching over me, its eyes gentle. Quick thinks had a few tricks up his sleeve right to the end, huh? With Round Rocks, we saw the Codex grant its knowledge to a child with a pure, innocent belief in its ideals. Seeing Quick Things do the same, it would seem that crazed obsession is a suitable substitute. Not that it availed him much in the end. I feel the presence of the horn beneath us. It and the core have become as one, forming an instrument of unbridled destruction. If we do not stop the core now, it will soon grow beyond the ability of anyone to contain it. It is little wonder our foe was loath to reach out to it with his own hand. Maybe we should do something about this. Cat, are you prepared to behave? I don't believe you. Let's go outside. Sorry if my voice is sounding raw. It's been a long recording session. It would seem our work here is done. Let us take our leave. Damn it all! Didn't we kill that bastard? Negative. Quick thinks better built own body. Made stronger than ordinary gobby. Quick thinks is not unmade by simple flesh wound. Better built? Seven hells, that's not a mask, it's his face. He's more machina than goblin. Alexander, Lord of Steel and Worthy Cogs, outspread wings of time. Let ignorant and unworthy feel divine judgment. Codex responds. He means to return to the past. Access denied. What means this? This red glow. Alexander's refusing to obey his commands? Alexander, junk brain machine, quick thinks his chosen one. 
Tongue flaps of quick things must be obeyed. It would seem Alexander has achieved what a simple flesh wound could not. Quick thinks his permanent deactivation. Quite how and why is less clear. If I didn't know better, I would say the machine had a mind of its own. Diane, my love, could it truly be you? You were in there all this time, weren't you? Watching over me, keeping me safe. Did it just blink twice? Bugger me, the machine's actually talking to her. So his soul really was in the primal all this time? Chief, is that even possible? The core. Without the codex to bridle its power, it rages out of control. It drinks in ether like no primal I've ever known. We must stop it now, lest Eorzea be bled dry. Finally, I see. This is why you summoned me to this place, isn't it, my love? I thank you for guiding me here, Dermon. And Round Rocks, know that I shall always treasure the time we shared. Farewell, my friends. Mide, no! Mide must not go! My friends, leave this place. Fear not, Alexander will trouble you no longer. My love? What, what is this place? How best to put it, we stand inside a mathematical simulation, calculated and projected by the device at the heart of the Colossus. One might equally say it is the dream that Alexander dreams. And what of our companions? Are they... Their fate was not mine to change, Mide. All that came to pass did so for a reason. History is as it was, as it should be, free of the paradoxes that spelled its undoing. From this place, unfettered by the mortal construct of time, Alexander looks out upon past, present, and future, seeing infinite possibilities. I see what it sees and feels what it feels. This perfect machine, born from yearnings for an ideal world. 
Ah, oh, if you could see the worlds we've seen. A world in which the Illuminati rule history with an iron fist, every nation brought under their yoke. A world in which Alexander spread wide the wings of time and swept the lesser moon from the heavens, averting the calamity. Alexander dreamed all the realities imaginable, all the realities mathematically computable, and in the end reached a single logical conclusion. It would change nothing and erase itself from existence. But why? Alexander possesses the power to travel through time and space and reshape history for the better, but such power comes at great cost. The sheer quantity of ether consumed in the process means that Alexander itself would, mayhap not immediately, but inevitably bring ruin to this world. This perfect machine, this supreme manifestation of logic and science, deemed its own existence a threat. And so it chose to do nothing, to leave history untouched and the future in the hands of man with all his imperfections. Such was Alexander's divine judgment. A time will come when the fate of this world is placed in the hands of one warrior. For reasons hidden to me, the future from that day forth remains shrouded in mystery, beyond even the Colossus's ability to calculate. And yet Alexander chose to believe in that man, and the light within him. I met that man, my love. I believe in him too. There was but a single time Alexander was spurred to action, not to change history, but to preserve it. The summoning of the Colossus and the events that followed had potentially disastrous consequences for our reality. Its fabric strained to accommodate an infinite number of potential futures separated by nary a thread. Were the wings of time to fall into the hands of the Illuminati, the repercussions would be dire indeed. History would be rewritten over and over again, each time bleeding the land of Aether. And in the end, the Colossus would usher in another calamity. To prevent this tragedy, to preserve the circle of time as it had already been set in motion, Alexander sent forth a humble servant to do its bidding. A clockwork curl an eternal child to gently nudge history back onto its proper path. And now but one task remains. Having become one with the horn, the core is well nigh indestructible. It would only regrow itself until it bled the world dry. And so we must heed Alexander's wish and seal it away, far from the reach of man. A closed pocket of space-time, a fraction of an instant that will repeat in perpetuity for all eternity. That's where the core must go, and us with it. Don't you see, my love? We're already there. In coming here, to you, I've closed the circle of time. I'm all but certain of it. When I accepted the horn all those years ago, the man who gave it to me said that it had the power to grant any wish. And so, as I took it in my hand, I prayed and prayed with every ounce of my will for the time, or for the one true desire in my heart. To be with you. Forever. And here we are. Trying to get this all done in three episodes, I see now, was maybe an error. That's okay. Lessons learned for next time. Either in the future we will spread this out more, or these will just sort of be a big special event. These raids. They don't happen that often. Anyway. Look at this, Derman. It's as if everything inside the barrier is frozen in time. I'll have to ask the Chief what he makes of this. Your guess is as good as mine. Round Rocks is back in Idleshear with the Chief. Everyone's safe and sound, except for Mide, that is. The poor lass always had a flair for the dramatic, but to think she'd throw herself into the core. It's odd, though. I could have sworn I heard her voice in there, saying the Colossus would trouble us no more, or something of the sort. And for what it's worth, it has been sleeping like a baby ever since we got out. 
And that's not the half of it. Take a closer look inside the barrier, Dermon. It's, it's like time is standing still. Buggered if I know what it all means, but I'd like to believe Mita and her love somehow sealed away the core for us. It softens the blow a bit, you know? That it does. Oof. Biggs has been reflecting on your final confrontation. Oof. Still not sure how he managed it, but I'm just happy to be out of that godsforsaken place in one piece. Of course, it's a damn shame what happened to me day. Oh, hold on a moment, Dermot. She's what? Aye, aye, Chief. Leave it to us. Bloody hells, Dermot. Round Rocks has gone missing. I've been worried sick about the poor lass ever since we got back. I mean, how would you feel if you saw your best friend throw herself into a running engine? I'll wager she's run off somewhere the two of them used to frequent together. Wedge and I'll have to look around here. Oh, why don't you search the collector's quarter? Come on, let's find her before she gets herself into any more trouble. I'm on the job. This sounds much easier than anything else I've been doing today. Hmm. Round rocks. I need you to be safe, okay? Please don't get into any more trouble. This episode's long enough as it is. Oh, it is Uplander. Why does Uplander come to this place? Round Rocks is sorry for worrying Uplanders. Round Rocks just wants to go to quiet place and do some back thinking. Running out of giant whirly cogs, Round Rocks feels something rattling in pocket. So Round Rocks reaches in and can't believe what she finds. Rattling thing is glowstone. Round Rocks' favorite is treasure. Shka. But it is dark. Even with many tryings, glowstone does not glow for Round Rocks. Not anymore. There you are, child. We were worried sick about you. What's that, Dermon? Is all to miss? The Codex no longer responds to her touch. Intriguing, if not entirely surprising. Were I to guess, I would hazard that it's because this experience has served to open her eyes. The Enigma Codex was born from one man's all-consuming pursuit of perfection. Its knowledge sealed off from any who harbored even a sliver of doubt as to the merits of the ideals it espoused. Quick thinks, me day in her youth, round rocks. Though their reasons might differ, arrogance, youthful idealism, childish innocence, none thought to question the words within, and so the Codex opened itself to them. But now Round Rocks has seen with her own eyes that bl or what blind devotion to ideals can bring. And she's not the naive child she was before. Aye. It's all well and good to dream of building something perfect, but sooner or later you gotta stop dreaming and start doing. Hammering it together by your own hand, with your own blood, sweat, and tears. In so doing, you're forced to confront your own failings, and deal with your frustration at the world's unfortunate habit of falling below expectations. Hells, there may come a time when you just want to tear the whole bloody things apart and start again. But more often than not, you'll emerge from it all with something you can hold on to, and carry with you into the future. And that'll do a damn sight more for you than any starry-eyed ideal. Round Rocks understands. Round Rocks will collect more and more junk, build city of great treasures, with own hands. That sounds nice. Round Rocks just has one wish. Not glowing glowstone is piece of Mide's dream. Round Rocks would give back to Mide. A noble wish, child. Would that we could grant it. But I fear the steel giant and all that lies within that barrier is far beyond the reach of mortal hands. Frozen in a single moment until the end of time. That's a fate I'd not wish on anyone. Meow. Hello, cat. Again. Well, look who it is. You have a real knack for turning up underfoot, don't you? I'm reminded of the apparent ease with which this little curl seemed to slip in and out of the Colossus. Were it not for the small matter of time having stopped in there, I'd send her in with Round Rocks' glowstone without a moment's hesitation. Meow, meow. Two mews? 
Might that suggest a willingness to try? Meow, meow. Giving a stone to a cat in hopes of delivering it to two souls trapped in time. Now I think we've seen everything. Do you think those two will ever be free to that place? Mayhap one day, when the perfect future they sought to bring about becomes a reality. In that sense, one might even say their fate is in our hands. Not a very good time for there to be a siren outside. <laughs> Scott, leave to Round Rocks. Round Rocks works hard, builds sparkly, shining future for me to. As shall we, child. And with that, Dermon, we must take our leave. For all you've done to stave off yet another primal threat, you have our gratitude. I contacted Biggs and Wedge to let them know that they can call off the search. Needless to say, they were relieved to hear that Round Rocks is safe. There was also a matter they were looking to discuss with you. They said they'd be waiting for you back at the shortstop. Okay. If you'll be returning to the shortstop, I would ask a small favor of you as well. Pray deliver this volume to Bakrix and tell him I believe it's that which he seeks. Until next we meet, Dermot. Oh, I'm sure it'll be very soon. Once my voice has had a second to rest. Whew. There's not enough tea in the world. All right. To the shortstop! And here we are. I return. Now Round Rocks is safe at shortstop and Backrix is easy breathing. Uplanders have thanks of Backrix. Hmm? Uplanders bring present for Backrix? That we do. Judging from the wear and tear of the parchment, this elegantly penned document entrusts, uh, entrusted to you by Yashola appears to be quite ancient. This, this is Charlian legend book from Yashola. Bakrix has waited for Legend Book for a long time. Bakrix has been reading about many, many things. About Enigma Codex and Blue-Haired Uplander that writes it. Maybe these knowings will save Gobbyflock from Giant of Whirlycogs, thinks Bakrix. Now Giant of Whirlycogs sleeps and Gobbyflock is safe. But still, Bakrix would fill Brain Case with knowings. Fill pages of Watcher Book with data. Let Bakrix see. Yes, yes, it is just as Bakrix... Are Backrix's eyes playing tricks on him? Oi, you feeling all right there? You look like you've seen a ghost. Page tells fairy legend of Hodko, Hodko tribe, uplanders of blue hair. Many, many years ago in old times, two children, boy and girl, outstep from belly of great steel giant. Two children grow to man and woman, becoming father and mother of great people of Hodko. Names of two are Dian and Mide. Look at hand drawing. Even faces are same looking. You gads. If that's our Mide and Dian, why, that means one day they'll be freed from their fate and reborn far, far in the past. So after searching for near an eternity, they finally found the perfect world they were searching for. It may just be a fairy tale, but I for one would like to believe it. And fairy legend goes on. Two children step out of steel giant holding small stone. Stone is dark when sitting on ground, but hold stone in hand and shiny lights. Glowstone of round rocks! Let me see if I have this straight. The codex fragment you gave to that curl a few moments ago now features in a legend from ages past. That can't be possible, can it? At this point, I'm about ready to believe bleed in anything. But that reminds me, there was something I wanted to ask you, Dermon. Remember when we went into the core and almost got our arses fried by that colossus inside a colossus? I felt the strangest sensation then, a feeling that chilled me to the bone, as if something terrible had happened that I couldn't for the life of me remember. I felt it too. So tell us, did you see anything when you were going in and out of time? Do you have any idea what happened to us while Quick Thinks was spinning the hands of the clock? I am afraid I think I do. 
<laughs> You're afraid you do? Well, that's not ominous in the least. On second thought, how about you don't tell us? Thank you very much. You'll get no arguments from me. There are some secrets better left secret, and from the look on Dermot's face, I reckon this is one of them. Anyway, it had seemed this long and thoroughly mind-boggling battle of ours has finally come to an end. Of course, there's still plenty of work to be done, but now that Quickthinks is out of the picture, I got high hopes that Round Rocks and her friends will one day build that shrine and kingdom of rubbish and refuse. Speaking of work, we better get back to it before the Chief catches us chattering. Always a pleasure, Dermon. Till next time. Good to see you two as well. We don't catch up often. It is done! We did it, everyone! Thank you all ever so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this extended detour from the post Heavensward story. We will be getting back to that next time, and I'm very excited about it, because it's got some good stuff in it. Thank you to everyone in the Tantalus Theater Company who joined us today. Thank you again to Aos for organizing all of this and coordinating it. Thank you everyone for waiting through all the cutscenes, and thank you all very much for watching. I will see you all next time for some more Final Fantasy XIV story mode. Do take care until then, and goodbye! Goodbye!